This video will give you a short overview of the steps you can perform to review the land fire data in the context of wildland fire and fuels management. Land fire data is ready to use as it is. There may be some things, however, that can be updated to increase confidence that the data appropriately represents your landscape of interest. Additionally, by performing some or all of these steps, you will gain experience with the land fire product, which will increase your ability to creatively and effectively use land fire to understand and manage your landscape. The steps discussed in this video were compiled from Stratton 2009 and Helmbrecht and Blankenship 2016. This video is simply an overview of the steps. Additional videos give detailed instructions on how to apply these steps using a sample area. This process is also outlined in the document How to Process Land Fire Data, available from the link in the description of this video. During this video, there are segments of demonstrations showing how these steps can be performed using a variety of operating systems. The operating systems featured here are ArcMap, FlamMap, and IFTDIS, or the Interagency Fuel Treatment Decision Support System. Detailed instructions on how to perform the various steps described here are in the How to Process Land Fire Data document, as well as additional videos that will be included in this series. IFTDIS also has an extensive library of videos and help features. You can get a login and find out more about IFTDIS by going to iftdss.firenet.gov. In other words, this video is not meant to be a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to perform these steps. Instead, it provides you with a bird's-eye view of the entire process. This process of evaluating land fire can be done individually, but is best done as a collaborative group, where each person has experience with different features in the area and an understanding of project objectives. Step 1. Define objectives. What are you going to be using the land fire data for? For example, will you analyze fuel treatment effectiveness or assess large-scale wildfire hazard risk? After each of the following steps, it is recommended that you evaluate whether the data appropriately represents your landscape of interest and if it can meet your analysis objectives. Step 2. Download the data for your study area in the proper projection. If downloading the data from the data distribution site on landfire.gov, make sure to select Best Fit UTM. Step 3. Observe where you are in relation to the land fire map zones, if you are near the edge or your project covers more than one map zone. Determination of fuel model, for example, was based on a series of rule sets determined by local experts. These rule sets vary from map zone to map zone, which may result in unrealistic fuel changes at the zone boundaries. If you see a large impact from these map zone boundaries, you can contact the land fire team to help adjust the rule sets for your area. Remember, they want this product to work well for you and are interested in your feedback. Step 4. Compile the natural or man-made disturbances that have occurred since the land fire data was produced. You will need both polygons for these disturbances and the conditions that the area changed to. For example, if an area was thinned, what is the current canopy cover in height? How did the fuel model change? If the area experienced a wildfire, were the results of the wildfire the same across the fire area? Or were there a variety of fire severities, which can be paired with corresponding changes to current vegetation condition? You could spend a great deal of time on this step, depending on the type of disturbance that has occurred in your area. Remember your objectives, though, and apply the level of detail that you need to meet those objectives. You can even help make these updates a part of the future Landfire product by getting this information to the Landfire team. Step 5. As an initial assessment of the data, put the Landfire data to work and see how it does. This will accomplish two objectives. It will help you determine if the Landfire data needs further evaluations, and then if it does require additional work to meet your objectives, then you will have a baseline to compare your future results to. In steps 6 through 9, you will be evaluating specific land fire layers. Each individual step might not lead to a definitive answer on whether something needs to be changed. Take notes on the indications that a value might need to be adjusted. Step 6. Assess the range and distribution of vegetation and fuel properties. This step is very useful in familiarizing yourself with the various land fire layers. Look at the distribution of the values across your area. For example, 
Are there generally higher canopy covers than you've observed? Are the most prominent fuel models from the land fire data different from what you've observed? Step 7. Confirm non-burnable areas. By separating out the non-burnable areas and looking at them over aerial imagery from the area, you can see what land fire is classifying as non-burnable. You may also see areas that are not classified as non-burnable that may look to be. If they are not classified as non-burnable, then what are they classified as? And could that be something that needs to be adjusted? Make sure to look across elevation ranges. Step 8. Combine layers. Due to the way the land fire layers are created, there will be inherent relationships between the layers. This process is important to supply additional evidence of potential changes that you've been building evidence for. By combining, for example, fire behavior fuel model, existing vegetation type, and canopy cover, you can see which combinations are the most common in your area and if those combinations make sense. For example, a timber litter fuel model that is shown to have a canopy cover of less than 30% may be a piece of evidence that the timber litter fuel model is not appropriate for that area. Step 9. Compare to field measured values. By taking even quick measurements in the field, such as canopy height, canopy cover, and fuel model, you can make a comparison between your measurements and the land fire data. This may lead you to make changes in the land fire data, or it could just lead you to an increased ability to interpret the results from land fire. You are now ready to make the appropriate updates to the land fire product and see how it works. Steps 10 through 12 use the updated land fire data to create various fire behavior outputs that you can evaluate and evaluate if the data look good enough or if additional changes need to be made to increase the performance. These steps require additional skill in fire modeling. Step 10. General fire behavior. Compare modeled fire behavior outputs to observed or expected fire behavior across the site. Start with non-burnable areas and then move to areas where you would expect moderate to high fire behavior. Step 11. Crown fire. Compare forested areas of high fire severity, represented by MTBS, or Monitoring Trends in Burn Severity, with flame length and crown fire currents. Try varying the inputs for the fire behavior modeling, such as the foliar moisture which influences the transition to crown fire. Step 12. Fire growth. Model fire behavior for one or two days from a reliable ignition source, either the original ignition point of the fire or the active fire edge from a previous day's fire perimeter. Make sure all other inputs are as close as possible to conditions experienced on the burn day. Adjust inputs as needed to obtain a modeled perimeter that is close to the observed perimeter. If the results from steps 10 through 12 do not match with observed or expected fire behavior, it may be appropriate to go back to step 6 and see if additional changes need to be made. Performing any of these steps will increase the accuracy and confidence in the land fire products. It will help with short and long-term predictions of values at risk. Do what you have time and ability to do. If you do find consistent differences between what exists in your area and the data from Landfire, please share what you find with the Landfire team so that they can consider how to resolve these differences in future versions of Landfire. The feedback you provide not only benefits you, but it benefits others with a one-stop shop source of important updated data. This video provided a quick overview of the evaluation process. There are several foundational documents that will be very helpful as you start on your evaluation process. And there is a growing library of resources on the Landfire Video YouTube channel that will show you how to perform these individual steps using various tools. Are there specific training videos that you would like to see from the Landfire team? Leave a comment below and tell us what you would like to see next. Mm -hmm.